Harrisburg junior Jacob Knuth stormed on the scene in a big way this fall. Knuth's precision passing and ability to run the football made him a unique threat. No one threw for more yards or touchdowns in the class. Tucker Large might not have the stats that make you go, wow, but teams deliberately avoided him on a weekly basis, and he still came up with five picks on D. The ultimate cover corner who can tackle and even helped on offense. Parker Reed is another defensive gem in this class. He backed up his terrific junior campaign with a stellar senior season. He made 77 tackles from his defensive end spot, and 20 of those, yes, 20, were for loss. Tommy Thompson was a warrior at quarterback for the Patriots. He's the reason Lincoln had a home playoff game. The three-time team captain threw for 1,940 yards and 24 touchdowns but he may have been even more important as a rusher. He ran for 511 yards and 10 scores. Our top two finalists in the class come down to Tyler Feldkamp and Tate Johnson. These seniors have been amongst the best I've seen since I started covering high school football 20 years ago. Tyler Feldkamp is the all-time leader at Roosevelt in catches and yards. This year, he caught 35 passes for 806 yards and 10 touchdowns. Plus, he affected the game with four picks on D and blocked two kicks and also returned two more kicks for touchdowns. One of the state's most versatile ever. Brandon Valley has had a lot of great running backs over the years, but maybe never more a complete back than Tate Johnson. He succeeded in a big way with 1,956 yards rushing and 29 rushing touchdowns behind an offensive line that was rebuilding. Johnson's agility and power are a rare combination. He has almost 4,000 scrimmage yards over his last two seasons. The field of contenders in 11 AA was wide this year, but the cream definitely rose to the top. Reagan Bowig might have been the team's most complete player. He set career records for receiving yards at Riggs High School and touchdown catches. Plus, he's been the team's rock on defense. The future SDSU player had a stellar senior year. Trevor Fitzgerald helped Yankton to their best season in three years. He passed for 586 yards and six scores, but was more important in the running game where he got 744 yards rushing and 23 touchdowns. He also returned a kick for a score. He was a big part of their defense and came up with an interception there as well. Parker Theobald was constantly in the opposition's backfield. The defensive end made 63 tackles, 24 tackles for loss, and forced three fumbles. He also started on the O-line and blocked for a run-first offense that produced over 278 yards per game on the ground. Our top two finalists in the class are the top two rushers in the class from the top two teams in the class. These guys are two bona fide studs. Josh Burai stormed the state with 1,650 yards rushing in only 150 carries. That's 11 yards per carry. He ended up in the end zone 28 times. There were times this year he seemed untackleable. No one produced more highlight reel than Burai. He was a pure joy to watch. McGuire Rasky's lowest rushing total of the year, 129 yards. He was a stalwart on the field, posing a threat running or receiving the ball. He had 2,250 scrimmage yards the most in class 11 AA. And he led his team to four titles in four years. In class 11A, Kobe June of Dakota Valley made huge play after huge play to keep Dakota Valley near the top of the class. He led the class in rushing yards with 1,204, and he also made big plays receiving and even passing the football. Austin Lake exceeded all expectations this year as the quarterback of the T-Titans. He showed the rest of the class that he can run the football as well as throw. He rushed in 19.
18 touchdowns and threw for 11 more as he led the T-Area Titans to an unbeaten record and a state championship. Canton senior Zach Richardson lined up on both sides of the ball and got after it no matter who was in front of him. Zach recorded 119 tackles this season and is the career leader in that department at Canton High School. The finalists are Kobe Mation from Del Rapids and Caden Johnson from T area. Caden Johnson averaged 103 yards per game rushing. That makes him the leader in school history in that department. Caden ripped off run after run. Many times it would break the game open for the Titans, just like he did in the championship game when he went on a 90 yard run to the house. Kobe Mation put a stop to 115 plays this year. That's a lot of tackles. And he collected five tackles for loss, three sacks, and he forced two fumbles. The undisputed leader of the defense was charged with making calls on that side of the ball and brought physicality to the team. Kobe also found time to punch in eight touchdowns on offense as a fullback. Class 11B was one of the hardest to discern. So many talented players who played both sides of the ball. We're going to start with Caden Eisman of Mobridge Pollock. He had free reign to throw the ball and throw it he did. He netted 2,220 yards through the air and 35 touchdowns. On the other side of the coin, Brady Fritz of Winner. He was more than capable of throwing the ball as a quarterback. He threw for a 60% completion rate and had a touchdown pass every five times he threw the ball. The only thing that stopped him was the play calling. Winner didn't have to pass a lot, so Brady did what he was asked, and he did a great job of it. Teammate Sam Kruger led the crowded winner backfield with 810 rushing yards and 11 touchdowns. He was also a beast on defense, 46 and a half tackles, and he forced two fumbles. Riley Schmitz proved to be one of the best EPJ has ever had. He ran for 1,354 yards and 14 touchdowns. On defense, he made 104 and a half tackles, and he had three sacks. He helped the Huskies become a legitimate contender as a senior. Another Riley was the leader of Bridgewater Emory Ethan. Riley Schultz led a stout Seahawk D with 82 tackles and five interceptions. But the award comes down to two. Jacoby Kraus and Jackson Schiller. Kraus was the epitome of a bell cow back. He carried the ball 296 times this year, and it paid off. He ran for almost 2,000 yards and 21 touchdowns. He had a 421 yard rushing game in week three. That's believed to be an 11 man record in South Dakota. Jackson Schiller can do anything. He ran for 1,053 yards and added 711 more scrimmage yards receiving. He collected a total of 22 touchdowns and is the Cossacks all-time scoring and receiving leader. Jackson got it done on D2 with 59 tackles and a pick. The state's biggest nine-man class featured a ton of unbeaten and talented teams during the regular season, and things got even hotter during the playoffs. Let's go over some of the players that made 9AA so good. Carter Hoffman of Duel played in just five games because of injury and because of quarantine for the Duel Cardinals. But in those five games, he created 14 touchdowns and had over 160 yards from scrimmage per game senior leaves high school football as one of the most versatile players in the game. Angel Johnson kept Viberg Hurley unscathed despite losing their star quarterback Chase Mason for the season. Angel is among the fastest players in the state and he was firing on all cylinders all season long. Jackson Noam was a great player all season but he heated up big time down the stretch put together 10 consecutive 100-yard games and finished with 2,000 yards rushing and 32 touchdowns from scrimmage. Our top two candidates in the class are Grayson Hansen of Platt Geddes and Cody Thompson of Lemon McIntosh. 
Grayson Hansen had a hand in 23 offensive touchdowns, but his dad and coach, Bruce Hansen, said Grayson changes the game on defense. He had 127 tackles, 14 and a half for loss. Platt made the biggest impact by creating turnovers, and he was a huge part of that. He forced four fumbles and grabbed four interceptions. Just a junior, Grayson walked off as the champion and MVP in the title game. Cody Thompson capped a phenomenal career as the quarterback at Lemon McIntosh. He's thrown for 8,667 yards and 121 touchdowns as a Cowboy. This year alone, he cracked the 3,000-yard passing mark and threw for 44 touchdowns. He also ran for 509 yards and nine more touchdowns. And as good of a player as he is, he's an even better kid. We've got a handful of very honorable mentions to give a shout out to. Stratton Eppard, the junior quarterback from Chester area, threw for 1,500 yards and ran for 1,026 in just nine games. He guided the Flyers to a surprisingly successful season in Chester and was the heart and soul of the team. Landon Lightholt was the do-everything guy for the Warner Monarchs this year. The two-time All-Stater led the team in tackles and receiving. He also did the punting and just about everything else that he was asked of. Isaac Sumption of North Border. He faced defenses designed to stop him, but somehow kept breaking through. He had three different 300-yard rushing games and ended up with 22 touchdowns rushing, one receiving, and two more through the air. The finalists in 9A come down to Riley Genslinger of Howard and Ty Sortman of Canastota Freeman. Riley led the Howard Tigers on offense all season long. He averaged over seven yards per carry and was a threat to catch the ball out of the backfield. He was the team leader in touchdowns too. He accounted for both touchdowns in their triple overtime drilling win over Canastota Freeman during the regular season. Tice Ortman put up one of the biggest performances on the biggest stage in the state. He exploded for 253 yards rushing and two touchdowns in their state championship win. He also had a forced fumble and led the team in tackles. He finished the year with 23 rushing touchdowns and threw for 14 more. And on his closing speed on defense, his coach Jane Strang said he's never seen anyone do it better. Class 9B has been wide open in the title chase this year and wide open in the player of the year chase. Here's a list of some of the honorable mentions in that class. Brendan Begaman of Harriet Selby area actually played through an injured wrist and still accumulated 1,894 yards rushing with 22 touchdowns as a sophomore. He also grabbed an incredible seven interceptions on defense. Corbin Harmeyer of Wolsey Westington went into the season without experience at quarterback, but he warmed up to that position just fine. He won the Joe Robbie MVP in the 9B championship game and passed for almost 2,000 yards on the year. TJ Hamer had an outstanding senior campaign with 960 yards throwing and an astounding 126 tackles on defense. He led Kadoka area to a semifinal matchup and was the leader throughout the year. Leighton Weber of Falkton area ran for almost 200 yards per game with 21 touchdowns. It was a bright spot in the Trojans' run to the playoffs this year. That brings us to our two finalists, Connor Libis of Del Rapids St. Mary and Logan Sirk of Alcester Hudson. First, Connor Libis. The mighty might switched from quarterback to running back and back to quarterback. He did whatever was needed. He helped lead the Cardinals to a runner-up finish with almost 1,400 yards of rushing and another 200 throwing. He also made an impact with three picks on defense. Libis fought through several injuries and was able to help his team each and every week on the field despite those setbacks. One of the fiercest competitors in the state. Logan Sirk of Alcester Hudson, he was a super tough dual threat quarterback. He was the only player in 9B to run and throw for over a thousand yards. He had several games where he took the Cubs on his back and led them to victory. 